You know, as corn growers, we always want to know how much N do we really need to apply to maximize yields. And it's a challenge for us. For years, as I would side dress, I would try to figure out what amount do I need to put on in June to finish the race for October 1st. The field behind me is a nitrogen study. So to set this up, we did blocks at 100 pounds of pre-plant nitrogen. The next block had 200 pounds on pre-plant or all in and all done before the planter ran. And then we have a block of just 30 units with the planter that gives us the opportunity to watch how nitrogen works throughout the growing season. As we're applying nitrogen today in this field, it's all about nitrogen placement. The John Deere sprayer behind me with the 360 Y drop will put it on two different rates. It'll put it on 100 pounds in one pass, right next to the stalk on both sides, right above our root system. It will also be doing a 60 pound pass where we will come back then at VT with additional 40 to bring that block up to 100 pounds. Where the colder cart will be positioned 100 pounds of in, dead center of the 30 inch row, about two and a half inches deep into the moist soil. The dry box urea spreader will have a 60 foot pattern with its fan. And that 100 pounds of urea pellets will be over the top of this growing crop. In these study blocks, all the same amount of in is being applied up to 200 pounds. But there's also some blocks in here for the real world where you and I farm each and every day. And so for my own personal farm, we apply 100 pounds with the planter pre-plant. And then we sit and wait and let time go by and we measure for our soil scan so we hit it on the button. So we'll represent that today by putting 60 pounds on at this stage. Then we'll continue to monitor and we have the ability at V10, V12, shoulder high, head high corn to either increase or hold off in less amount. So we let nature take its course. Where we have the 200 pound study blocks in the back where water will be going over it representing exactly 2015, we know we'll run out and we'll need more in and there'll be more dollars invested to create the high yield. So let's take a look at the results. Let's start with the dry non-irrigated side where nature itself, where the colder ran right down the center of the row of 100 pounds of UAN, we ended up with 206.3 bushels. Right next to the urea with the pellets through the buggy, we ended up with a 210.9, so the urea was about 4.6 bushel better. Right next to that with the Y drop, remember we're talking about placement here, the hose running on each side of the stalk, 231.7 bushel for a 25.4 bushel advantage. So now let's take a look on the south side of this plot where we had the irrigator running representing the 2015 rainfall. Remember, a lot of rainfall in 2015. And it shows up here. You can see the colder in the center of the row at the 100 units of UAN went 194.8. Right next to it, the urea pellets in the wet side went about 3.9 bushel advantage. Then we came to the Y drop where placement is so critical. Right on each side of the stalk, we had a 27.7 bushel advantage really proves out when we're super wet, placement matters. You'll notice that our plan to reproduce 2015 if a lot of water worked, all the yields on the irrigated side are lower than the non-irrigated side where nature just did its natural thing. So is there value in spoon feeding nitrogen? Let's take a look at the blocks where we had all the nitrogen on and a once and done, 170 weed and feed, and 30 with the planter, where we compared it to 100 with weed and feed, and then coming back and spoon feeding an additional 100, only at different applications. So the colder and urea versus Y drop. The colder actually ended up about 4.6 bushel less than the 200 pounds once and done. The urea was dead even. And then the Y drop at a V7 of 100 pounds actually ended up being about 20.8 bushel better. At V15, which was a little late when we come to spoon feeding, it was only 13.6 bushel better of Y drop over the once and done. And then when we come in with a two pass Y drop, some of boot high corn at V7 and some at V15, so 60 pounds of V7, 40 of V15, 
we had a 36.7 bushel advantage. And that makes a lot of sense to me when we understand how the summer went. If we think about now over on the irrigated side, where we had 2015 rainfall, things start to switch up some. The 200 pounds of all on went at 194.1. Colder, just about a bushel better. Urea, about 4.6 bushel better. Then we went to wide drop in the V7. We ended up with a 28.4 bushel gain over 200 pounds all on at once. The V15 went 234 for a 40.6 bushel gain. And you can see that that much water, once again, placement matters. Then we come in and we did the split up on the wet side. It's different than over on the dry side where we had 60 on at V7 and then all that rainfall, it flat washed it out. And we came back of just 40 at V15. We only ended up being 32 bushel better. So there's about an eight bushel difference there. It makes sense to me because of all that additional rainfall at V7, that nitrogen moved and we should have come back with more than 100 pounds of E15. We could have taken it right back up in that 240 bushel range. So a base plus system lets us be very nimble and flexible. And it always lets us be right with nature and the weather events that we have throughout the year. And so for our team, whether it's dry or whether it's wet, I want to win. And wide drop application lets us do that. And at the end of the day, you and I can put more money in our pockets.